my dear friends, my dear DLD community. Now I'm extremely proud to welcome Ugo Schein. And talking about what the world needs now, he is the man of the hour. Ugo and his team at BioNTech developed their COVID-19 vaccine at record speed. It was the first vaccine to be approved by the European Medicine Agency and has proven to be 95% effective against this pandemic virus. It's amazing. Ugo, and I'm proud for this, first spoke at DLD in 2015. His talk then was about personalized cancer immunotherapies. For 25 years, Ugo and his wife has focused, have focused his, their research on novel approaches to fight cancer and to prevent infectious diseases. Their work has inspired um, um, Professor Sain to develop new classes of highly potent mRNA vaccines. You just heard about them at Stefan Oschmann's and Pardis talk. I'm proud to welcome him here today to hear about his work and his insights on how we can prevent the next pandemic. Ugo, the floor is yours. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the invitation, Steffi. It's a pleasure to be here. Can you see my screen? We can, yes, we can. Yes, I would like to, to talk about our mRNA vaccine approach and would like to uh, to take you on a, on a journey, uh, actually where our journey started more than 25 years ago, uh, uh, when we were considering to develop new type of cancer immunotherapies. So this is uh, this uh, is uh, the starting problem statement that we that uh, we uh, we had uh, more than 25 years ago. As a key question for us wo uh, was why uh, so many cancer treatments are failing and what is the root cause? And our hypothesis was that the root cause for cancer treatment failure is is that every cancer is different. Uh, every patient cancer is uh, occurring by DNA mutations and this DNA mutations are random. So every patient is, is acquiring other type of mutations and these mutations accumulate over 20 years so that every cancer patient has a different tumor and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and even every tumor cell is different. So this is an ongoing uh, system of mutations and cancers are genetically instable. The question that we asked at that time is, is it possible to, to use, uh, to develop treatments which are as unique as cancer patients are? And we came up with a simple concept. We said, if every patient has a different tumor, why don't we, do, why don't we create vaccines, uh, individualized vaccines, which are tailored to every patient. And the, the way how we consider that is, is to analyze the tumor, identify all cancer mut mutations, and, and then develop a vaccine which is specific, specific for these mutations. And, uh, and then yeah, in, uh, use this vaccine to induce immune responses that can attack the cancer cells. So this concept, of course, requires that we would need to make a vaccine on demand. Uh, and, uh, and since the patient has a growing tumor, this needs to be done fast. At that time, more than 20 years ago, we asked the question, which type of technology can we use? And we came, we came up with the concept of developing mRNA vaccines. The main reason for using mRNA vaccines is that mRNA vaccines can be produced very easily. You just need a DNA template for that. You can use an in vitro synthesis. This is a reaction that can be done in a few hours to produce the vac vaccine mRNA. And then the vaccine mRNA can be protected, for example, with a lipid nanoparticle and can be engineered in a way that is taken up by the cells of the patient yeah, and 
and the vaccine itself, the protein itself, is produced inside of the cell. So that means that means we would bypass with this technology, which would allow us to make vaccines in a few days, bypass the need to make the vaccine antigen, which is made by the patient's cells itself. So we in, invested invested a more than a decade research uh, in, uh, to, into this technology. And uh, in 2014, we started a clinical trial for the first time uh, um, showing that this approach works. So this approach is depicted here. We get a sample from a patient. We do the mutation discovery. We determine the mutations. And then we select the mutations. And then we make a messenger RNA vaccine just tailored to, to, uh, to these uh, to this mutations. And then the vaccine is administered. We have shown that this approach indeed results in strong immune responses. So this is, these are immune cells of one patient before vaccination, and this is after vaccination, showing strong uh, immune responses. When we started this approach in 2014, the time required from the sequence to the, to, to the vaccine was about three to five months. So we invested into technology, we invested into processes and reduced this time to, to three to five weeks in 2019. And moreover, our team at BioNTech trained this approach uh, and produced vaccines for hundreds of patients. So this became a routine. Then in 2020, in, in January, we, we planned to, to, to continue our cancer research, but then we got aware about an outbreak in China. And uh, this, this is the SARS-CoV-2 uh, SARS outbreak. And it appeared that this outbreak, like many outbreaks, uh, in, uh, uh, initiated with an increasing number of, of, of uh, cases. But then, with with a number number of of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, reactions and control mechanisms, and uh, the number of cases sharply dropped. So it appeared that the pandemic is already in control in January. But then I read a paper in end of January. It was published in Lancet, and and this paper described described in a very detailed manner. Infections in a family, family with this new type of virus, and this description was very, very informative. It was about a new dis disease, a new coronavirus. It was clear uh, that the human population is susceptible to this infection. It was clear that the virus has a reproductive number of more than two. It was clear that the disease had a significant mortality. And what was new, what was really, really concerning is there was one case in this, in this family who had a, who had a PCR positive, uh, positive uh, uh, um, uh, disease, but was asymptomatic. And this was concerning because having such a pattern means that and uh, that this fulfills all criteria of an outbreak with a high pandemic potential. On the same, same day, I did some research and found that Wuhan, the city where the outbreak was, is one of the best connected cities, cities in China. And it has an international airport. Yeah? And within, uh, within one week, there were more than 2,300 flights, indicating that this this uh, outbreak will not uh, uh, stay local, but uh, could become a global pandemic. We had this mRNA technology in place, and we, we knew that we can make extremely fast vaccines. So we felt the obligation to start a vaccine program. Already in the, on the weekend, we started to, to read literature uh, uh, and to understand how we could build a vaccine. Fortunately, this virus was a member of a family and other members had occurred 20 years ago.
So we screened the literature, what was known about this, the other members, and came up with a strategy to build a vaccine, to build a vaccine, which is which is uh, which um, uh, uh, is directed against the potential key antigen required required uh, for the entry of this vi uh, virus family, which is the spike protein. So we did. We were not experts on this virus, and and uh, but we were experts on on immunology and Im immune engineering, and we knew how the immune system works against viruses. For controlling viruses, you need you require antibodies. Antibodies are now produced by memory B cells and this antibodies can inactivate and neutralize the virus and inhibit their uptake. Then you have CD40 cells. These are helper, helper cells that all orchestrate the immune response. And then you have CD80 cells, which are able to kill infected cell, cells and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, provide a second layer of control. So we said we need to come up with a vaccine which provides a, a optimal pro uh, protection by producing all this type of immune responses. We started, we started with more than 20 candidates and, uh, and evaluated them in a preclinical setting. And what we did is we took the sequence of, this, of the virus, made a messenger RNA, formulated that as an LNP, and brought four candidates uh, to clinical testing for clinical evaluation. So within 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 uh, 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 three months, we were able to start the clinical trial in in Germany. We started collaborations with our partners Pfizer and with a Chinese company Fosun Pharma to ensure that we build on an international collaboration to ensure that we can do global clinical trials. And we started clinical trials in in Germany, in the United States in China, and on July, July 27, we started our phase two free clinical trial, um, recruited more than 44,000 subjects, and uh, on November 18, we, uh, we got the first read out of our vaccine trial, showing the 95% of efficacy. So this was a 10 month journey from the sequence to, to, um, to a, a phase three evaluated vaccine. So this was a global approach um, with clinical testing in the United States and South, um, uh, um, uh, uh, South America, South Africa, in Europe, uh, in, in Turkey, in China, in Japan, in Australia. And, um, and uh, the key findings of this trial have been published with a high protection rate, overall protection rate, and most importantly, a high protection rate in subjects uh, older than 65 years, 65 years old. So this, um, this data indicated that we have, we, have, we have an effective vaccine. And of course, then the next challenge is to make the vaccine available, av available worldwide. And this means regulatory approaches and collaboration with, um, with international uh, authorities. In the meantime, we have been able to get authorizations and approvals in 66 countries, and we started to deliver vaccine into 66 countries. And of course, this is a manufacturing challenge. What we have also been able to establish, establish is a collaborative network. Uh, actually, actually, the demand for vaccines created a new messenger RNA production ecosystem with was established pharmaceutical companies like uh, Merck, uh, Novartis, and Sanofi joining joining as supporters, as well as specialized biotech companies providing, for example, lipids or providing the opportunity uh, for formulation. So, <laughs> of course, the manufacturing is one of the uh, uh, greatest challenges here again the way how the mRNA is manufactured. We need a DNA template. The uh, mRNA is produced by in vitro transcription. Then we formulate the mRNA. Then we need the quality control uh, release, and then we can supply. 
to just give you the challenge challenges in numbers in 2019 over the year we had produced uh, 10,000 doses of M mRNA in total in 2020 we were able to produce 25 million doses and for 2021 we aim to deliver up to 2 billion doses so this is this is a scaling up factor of 200,000 within about 18 months. Um, and, and this is, of course, of course, a huge challenge. The next challenge, of course, is that the virus is, is, um, is evolving and there are additional mutants, um, mutants which are, which are, which are coming coming up in different geographic localiz localizations. There are mutants in South Africa, in Europe, and uh, in uh, in South America. And this is this is this is this is the normal way how how viruses mutate and evolve. But what we also see is that the viruses evolve in individual patients. Uh, particularly if the patients have a longer type of disease um, because of being immunocompromised. This type of mutations are of course random, but the selection pressure, the immune selection pressure, uh, creates particularly, particularly antibody escape mutants. So these are all regions where antibodies, antibodies bind and, and, uh, and antibodies, uh, um, uh, antibody binding sites, sites for neutralization. And what is evolving are viruses uh, which carry, carry mutations in the antibody neutralization sites or mutations which make the spike protein more stable or ensure that the spike protein could, could bind better to its receptor. But this is something which is, which is normal. Viruses mutate and, 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 uh, and particularly they mutate if many people are infected. So far, we have evaluated more than 25 variants of, of viruses. And for almost all of the variants, we could show that antibody responses generated against BNT162 B2 are still able to, to neutralize, neutralize um, mutants uh, almost at the same level. Here's the example for the UK variant. The only exception is the South African variant, where we still see a strong neutralization, but overall reduction of neutralization titers up to a level of three. So what is, what is the strategy how to deal with this type of, of emerging variants? First of all, I personally am not too much concerned because the type of immune responses that we are generating are combined immune responses. We have the antibody response and we have the T-cell response. And the T-cell response is a second layer of protection. But it is important to be, to be prepared. So the steps for a vaccine adaptation uh, requires, first of all, that we get a vaccine adaptation process in place. So we need a clinical trial. We could call this trial blueprint, blueprint trial to ensure that in this trial we manufacture an mRNA vaccine which is tailored against a new variant. Then we can evaluate the safety and the immune responses and the comparability of the immune responses uh, against um, this variant and against the prior variant. And if the data are are reasonable and, uh, and safety is proven, then we could obtain an approval for a vaccine ad adaptation process. This could be a universal approval, which would allow us to continue to monitor variants. And if we believe, and if there is reason uh, to change, then we could adapt the vaccine whenever really needed. So the vaccine change process is the same uh, as the process for, um, for manufacturing the original vaccine. That means we need to define the pathogen. We, we, get, we get the genetic information. We make the plasmid DNA. We make the mRNA. We formulate. We do the quality control and release. And then the supply starts. 
So this in principle can be done in, in a matter of a of, of few months. And this is indeed required if we would get a super variant which could have a higher higher uh, infection rate and is uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, could be able to escape the immune responses but at the moment i do not see uh, a great concern of the existing variants that this is going to happen so of course we are always concerned but we should not forget what we have already accomplished so uh, uh, this is this is the the, the number number of uh, of COVID cases uh, here in Germany. So from February uh, 2020, when uh, the first cases uh, um, uh, were observed in Germany, until now, in the last 12 months, there were 2.39 million COVID-19 cases in Germany. So the first vaccines, vaccination, uh, vaccination started in Germany on December 27, and we have about a little bit less than two months. And in this less than two months, we have already vaccinated more individuals with, uh, um, than, than, um, than uh, COVID cases. So we have already overcome and, uh, the, the situation. We have more vaccinated than actually infected people. What is even more encouraging is if we look to the daily vaccinations and daily COVID-19 cases. These are, this is the statistic from February 19, uh, last Friday, 7,300 new COVID cases and 89,000 new vaccinated, vaccinated uh, uh, subjects. This is only possible by a collaborative approach with the European Commission, with the EMA, with the Paul Ehrlich Institute, with the Bundesregierung and, uh, and the Bundesländer. And, uh, and of course, this is a huge logistic challenge, but I believe everyone is, is, is doing great. Otherwise, we would not be here where we are. So in, in a summary, uh, this was the fastest vaccine developed and approved against a novel pat uh, uh, pathogen in medical history. So these are the development times times for for uh, for selected vaccines, and so far one of the fastest development vaccine developments was the development of the mumps vaccine against a new pathogen. It was about four and a half years. Here is the development time for for the COVID nineteen vaccines. So uh, vaccine development started in 2020 and uh, was was uh, and we got the first first conditional approval in in December within within 11 months. The success was only possible because we have a new type of compound, mRNA, is a versatile versatile new pharmaceutical. This was only possible because of decade long research on mRNA vaccines and because of the competences that we had built in our personalized cancer vaccine approach. Actually, we had started to make a vaccine for a single individual, and we ended up to make a vaccine for the whole mankind. This was a science-driven collaborative approach, and it required the full commitment uh, of partners and close collaboration of all stakeholders. We are we are positive that mRNA vaccines can enable the fast adaptation of the vaccine to newly emerging SARS-CoV-2 variants if they are needed. First of all, we need to get all vaccinated and ensure that we can build herd immunity already until end of summer. Thank you for your attention. What you, Ugo, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your journey from, from the beginning of your research to now. And what you did is serving humankind, all, all of us, the global population of the world. I'm, I'm deeply impressed and I, I'm convinced that what you did, you and your team did, is made history for all of us. Thank you for this. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for being such a charm, charming, decent human being. Um, 
I'm proud that you share that you have been here. And as you can see, my words almost I, I I'm so um, so touched seeing you. Thank, thank, thank you, Steffi. It's, it it was a great pleasure to, to join. Thanks for the invitation and thank you and, for uh, coming. Thank you. And we are looking forward to the next steps of Beyond Tech. Of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Big sum up. See you in five years again, <laughs> maybe earlier. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ugo Sainz. Thank you, Beyond Tech, for serving our world. So good.